We're going to be going through an example here where we're going to be looking at the reconciliation of pre-tax financial income and our taxable income. And for this example, we're going to know what our taxable income is, but we're going to have to determine our uh, pre-tax or our financial income. And also there's going to be no permanent differences here, but we're going to have temporary temporary differences that result in a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. And we're also going to calculate the tax expense, the tax payable, and any deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability for the period. So let's go down and let's look at our example here. So this is, let's move down to over here. So for our tax accounting. So what we're trying to attempt to do in this example here is we want to determine what our pre-tax income is here. And that would be uh, equal for our tax accounting purposes. And it also would be the pre-tax uh, financial income. So that's what we want to determine. And we can uh, determine that based on the changes that we have in temporary differences for the period here. And we're going to have two of those here for a deferred tax liability and a deferred tax asset. And we're also going to know what our taxable income is. So based on that, we're going to be able to determine what our tax payable is. So let's go out and let's look at how we would uh, reconcile this, uh, our taxable income here versus our pre-tax income or our financial income. Okay, so work we're going to go through here and this would be the case here when you're dealing with any deferred tax liabilities or deferred tax asset here and you may have any number of them in your when you're doing a problem like this but this is the basic procedure that you would go through now for example here we're going to have a deferred tax liability at the beginning of the period here and we're just look at year x1 here and that uh, we have at sixty thousand dollars now I'm showing everything in thousands of dollars here. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to come up with the related temporary difference for this deferred tax liability of $60,000. So you know that uh, that would simply be the 60,000 divided by the tax rate here. And we're gonna use a tax rate of 40% for this problem. So that's gonna equal $150,000. So that's what the temporary difference at the beginning of the year here. Just so you understand uh, this uh, temporary difference that uh, just remember you would, how this relationship works here. So you take your temporary difference here times your tax rate of 40% here, the 150,000 times 40%, that's gonna give you your deferred tax liability uh, as well uh, of 60,000 here. So that's how we got our relationship here, the division of the uh, tax rate divided into the deferred tax liability in this case to be $150,000. So you start out with the temporary differences at the beginning of the year. Somehow you have to determine that at the beginning of the year here. So we were able to determine that based on knowing our deferred tax liability at the beginning of the year and our tax rate. And then let's just say at the end of the year here, we determined or we know what our temporary difference is here for this deferred tax liability here. That's $210,000. So just compare your beginning uh, balance here with your ending balance here. You're gonna see you have an increase here of $60,000. So that's what it was originated here for year X1 or the period here from January through December here for our year that we're looking at here for our accounting period here, uh, year X1. Okay, so what that amounts to is a, gonna be a future taxable amount, this $60,000 here that was originated here, based uh, for originated based on our temporary difference here that results in a deferred tax liability. Future taxable amount. Okay, now let's go down and let's look at how we deal with a deferred tax asset here. So for our example, we're gonna have a deferred tax asset at the beginning of the year, we're given that here. Uh, of $20,000. So the related temporary difference would be same calculations as we did above here. So you take the deferred tax asset of 20,000 divided by the tax rate of 40% and your temporary difference is going to be $50,000. So there's where we uh, look at it first. So X1, the beginning of the year here, we're gonna have that temporary difference of $50,000 here, again, for the deferred tax asset here, resulting in a deferred tax asset. And then at the end of the year, let's say we're given it it's 95,000 here. So again, you, all you're gonna do is look at the difference here. In this case, you have an increase here from the beginning of the year here, 50,000, to the end of the year here of 95,000. So you originated during the year here, X1, 
$45,000. Now that uh, future deductible amount. Again, let's just go back to the deferred tax liability. So you would just a note here, you started out here at the beginning of the year, 150,000, you increased it to 210,000. So that's an increase here. So that would have been originated to 60,000. And just for a deferred tax asset, again, you see the, what's going on here. Your temporary difference actually increased from the beginning of the year here to the end of the year here. So you originated during the year here $45,000, which is a future deductible amount. Just so you understand what's going on with this relationship. When you're dealing with deferred tax liabilities and deferred tax assets, you have to determine what your beginning balance is in each case here, and you have to know what your ending balance is, and then you have to look if you have any increases or decreases to determine what was originated during the period. And for our two examples here for a deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability, both of them had an increase for the year here. Okay, so we've determined what our temporary differences would be here. And we looked at both the two uh, deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. Now let's go down and let's look at our tax accounting based on our taxes. Now this is where we're going to be able to solve now for our income or our pre-tax income here and that would be really our financial income for the period. Okay so what we would do here we take and we're looking at the end of the year here x1 so we'll start with our temporary difference the deferred tax liability. Now remember that was what we originated up here for the year here uh, $60,000. Now remember deferred tax liability uh, we would we would subtract that from our income our pre-tax income here since uh, it's going to be we're using up the we're, the tax now here uh, we're using it for our tax accounting now, but we're not going to be use, uh, able to use it in the future here, so it's a deferred tax liability. So you subtract that from your income here. That was the $60,000. And let's look at its deferred tax liability based on that originating amount here, $60,000. So you just take your $60,000 here times your tax rate of 40%, and that equals $24,000. That would be our deferred tax liability uh, for the period here based on that originating amount. Now going down and looking at our temporary difference for a deferred tax asset. Now remember that was what we calculated up here originated for the year here $45,000. So that would be added to our income before taxes. So we're actually paying or prepaying our tax on that. That's why it's considered a deferred tax asset. So you would add that in here $45,000. And now, okay, we're given our taxable income for this case here, and we're giving it to be $115,000. So now we can determine our income before taxes or our pre-tax financial income here. So that's simply just plugging our numbers in here. Take, let's just say that's X, our income before our pre-tax financial income. That's our unknown here. So we would have subtracted 60,000 here. We would have added 45,000 to it. And we know it's 115,000, that's what we're given here. So just doing our uh, algebra here, moving our numbers to the other side, our 60,000 move over here, 45,000 move over here as a subtraction, 60,000 would be an addition. We're gonna come up with our, uh, using our algebra, our pre-tax financial income here is $130,000. So that's how you tackle these problems here. Now in our case, we only had the tempor two temporary differences, we had no permanent differences. And now let's just look down at our tax payable. We can easily figure that. Say our tax rate is 40%. Our taxable income is 115,000. So 40% times 115,000 is going to be our current taxes or our tax payable here of $46,000. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at our journal entries here or how we'd record, uh, determine our tax expense for the period here. So this is what we're going to do here. So we Let's just look at how we'd make our entries here. So our tax payable here on our balance sheet would be our liability here. So we would credit that here for what we calculated, $46,000. And then we had that deferred tax asset. Remember that was an asset account here. We would debit that here for what we calculated, $18,000 here. And then we have our deferred tax liability. We would credit that here for $24,000. That's what we calculated up here. Okay, so we've we plugged all our numbers in here for a deferred tax asset, deferred tax liability here, and our tax payable. Now our tax expense, 
is really a balancing entry or a plug here and we can look at our debits and credits here so we just plug in the balance here and we're going to debit that for fifty two thousand dollars our tax expense on our income statement so how do we get that let's just look at that we take our tax payable here we had a credit of forty six thousand our deferred tax liability we have a credit here of twenty four thousand now our deferred tax asset would be a reduction to our taxes here so but that is a debit amount here you can see where that would be uh, reducing it here eighteen thousand dollars so net amount forty six thousand plus twenty four thousand minus eighteen is going to give us our tax expense here of uh, fifty two thousand dollars here that's for year x1 that's what we calculated here and that's really again just the plugging here you that's the way you would determine that here you get your credit amount here of forty six thousand a credit here of twenty four thousand and then you need uh, you have a debit amount here of eighteen thousand so you need a balancing debit amount here to balance everything out at fifty two thousand dollars okay so that's how we would uh, determine uh, set up our accounts here for our our tax payable, which is our current amount of the tax here, and then we had to calculate our deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability based on what was originated during the period here. And based on those amounts here, we were able to plug in and determine our tax expense for the period. Okay, so now let's go up and let's look at how we would record this here on our income statement here for the year so I'm just showing our accounts here you have those accounts here and let's move down here just to look at how we'd record it here so now we take our in looking at our income tax expense section here on the income statement for 20x1 and I'll show our what we I'm showing this what we carried over here if you can't see it in the T accounts here you can see it here okay so what we would start out with our income before taxes that's what we uh, pre-tax income that we calculated here at a hundred and thirty thousand dollars then we would have our income tax expense here uh, and that would be the current portion here that was the forty six thousand here remember that was our tax payable up here to forty six thousand and then we have the deferred portion of our income tax expense and that's simply taking our deferred tax in this case it's going to be an expense portion here or it's going to increase our expenses because our deferred tax liability is greater than our deferred tax asset here deferred tax liability that was twenty four thousand deferred tax asset eighteen thousand so the difference here is going to give us six thousand dollars so that's because only because it's a deferred tax li the deferred tax liability is greater than deferred tax asset uh, the opposite would be true here for deferred tax asset would be greater than deferred tax liability then it would be a reduction to our income tax expense but in this case it's an increase in our income tax expense and that would be labeled as the deferred portion here okay so you total up your current portion forty six thousand plus the deferred portion here of six thousand you're going to come up with a total income tax expense here of fifty two thousand here for the period so subtract that here from your income before taxes here of one hundred thirty thousand you're going to come up with the net income for the period here at seventy eight thousand dollars okay now let's look at what we would just look at our effective tax rate if you had to calculate that out here again that was the fifty-two thousand here of an income tax expense here, divided by the income before taxes of one hundred thirty thousand. You're coming up with forty percent, and the reason you're coming up <clears throat> that's the tax rate we have been using here, for example, and that's because there's no permanent differences, and the effective rate should equal the statutory rate here, which it does here. And we're to, uh, just say the effective rate, uh, the statutory rate or that was the income tax rate here set by the government of 40 percent that we used here equals our effective rate so that just proves out our example that everything uh, was correct when we made our deferred tax liabilities and our deferred tax asset calculations and that's just a way to prove everything out here when you're doing those problems if it didn't come out here if there was a defective effective tax rate here for whatever reason was greater than or less than our what we were using that 40 percent rate then we would have had some wrong calculations here in in any of those numbers here for our income tax expenses okay so we went through a basic uh, problem here and let's just move back up here to our uh, t accounts here we have to determine uh, really what we were looking for is our tax expense here and 
we had to determine what our tax payable was and a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability for the period here. And we did that by looking at the uh, changes that we had in any temporary differences for the, that resulted in deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. And we have to determine what the originate what was originated uh, for the period, and that was the difference between the temporary difference in the beginning of the period here and the end of the period or end of the year here in for a deferred tax asset that was a f this is a future deductible amount here a deferred tax liability here a, f a future uh, taxable amount okay so again we went through and we had to determine our income before taxes only to reconcile it and make sure it was the same as our pre-tax financial income and we did that here so let's just uh, summarize our uh, example here where we concluded with we had to determine our income tax expense here on our income statement for 20x1 in here. And I'm just concluding it here to show that we have to start with our income before taxes here. That was that pre-tax financial income here that we had to calculate here, which we did here. And then we had to subtract out our income tax expense, both the current portion, our tax payable here, and what we calculated for the deferred portion here, the deferred tax liability, deferred tax asset. The difference gave us in this case an increase in our net increase in our tax expense. Deferred tax asset reduces our expense here or deferred tax liability increases our tax expense. Knowing what our income tax expense is, both the current and deferred portion, we are able to subtract out health here from our income before taxes that we had to calculate here gave us our net income for the period. Okay, so that'll conclude our discussion.